Hello all, this is Devi Prasad. In this video, I am going to explain about a content modifier step in SAP HCA, SAP HANA Cloud Integration uh, Integration Tool. So in this uh, uh, iFlow, we can select the content modifier by seeing we have so many steps, right? Right side. This is a palette. So we can select and we can go for the message transformation transformation transform transformers and we can choose our uh, our required one so drag it and paste here so in my, in my example i have already selected one uh, uh, content modifier which has a header property and body so we can change the header parameters and modify the header parameters when we can change the property parameters or modify the parameters or add the parameters or delete the parameters and you can also uh, put our own uh, message content for the body okay let us see a few examples in section here we can add and we can select and remove also if we don't need it if, if you add it you have to we have two options you can remove the had variables here these are the variables we can create and create and give the name of that variable and what type of variable that is here in this case i have um, xpath as well as uh, constant xpath header expression property uh, property external parameter local variable and global variable so we can choose your our own parameters let me uh, drag this one so that you can also view all the parameters more drag right yes so you can view it all the parameters now right and uh, action whether it is create or delete name name of the variable our header or property and type is it a constant is it text path is it a header is it expression is it a property is it an external parameter is it a local variable is it a global variable and type of the data type generally we use java dot lang dot string but it supports others also object also and uh, value you can put the value so if it is constant we can put some value here right like one two three so <coughs> but uh, i will tell you what are the different uh, rules and conditions while creating these uh, uh, variables so, content modifier headers okay so what uh, we have reference is so depending on which uh, container you want to modify select that uh, tabs header message header message body exchange property and if uh, if modifying the message body you can either the data you want to add um, to the message body in the editor if you if modifying the message header or exchange property you can define how to access the content of the incoming message which is then used to change the selected data container for example you can select xpath to specify the xpath expression and x um, address uh, as a particular element in the incoming message which you will be used in the change change the message header okay so um, one thing you need to remember the note is the data written to the message header during the processing step for example in the content modifier or script step by using script also we can modify a header property body remember there are two steps the two things we can modify the contents by using script as well as header property body will be able to uh, part of the outbound message address to a receiver system whereas a property will remain in within the integration flow and will not be handled over to the receiver so the property parameters are not hand out to the receiver parameters only header parameters and body parameters are hand out to the receiver system so the scope of the um, property variables are within the uh, within the um, i flow only not uh, outside of the i flow we have to remember this point now so uh, let us see what are the different important thing first thing is action right 
You can specify the whether the content modifier should create a delete or a header or property defined by the table row. You must specify the name of the header or property you want to delete it. So to delete add a header or property. Okay. Next is name. Name under which specified data has to be stored in the selected header or property um, data container. So by using this name, it will, the value will be saved into the, the specific container. So exchange message has a three containers. One is header, property and body. So property parameters are uh, the, the scope of the persistence of property message only in the iFlow, not outside the iFlow. But you have to remember this point. So uh, next is name over and type indicates the kind of data you want to use change the content of the selected header or property data container constant allows you to write a constant value to the header or property data container special characters like um, uh, brackets are not allowed coming to header so this is constant right now let us take about the talk about the header allows you to specify the name of the camel header you can then use the header to dynamically define the properties in subsequent steps for example if you you specify the header name camel split index the camel header of the same name which counts the actual number of splits into the message uh, split scenario is accessed from the incoming message the subsequent step you can use following expression to refer to the header uh, uh, for a dynamic configuration use dollar symbol so dollar symbol this like this you can use if you want to so it will fetches the all the previous header details so that you can thus you can specify in this manner okay mm, so by using uh, um, previ in previous case i don't have any values that's why I'm, I'm not able to fetch any details here otherwise i would have fetched it Hmm. Okay. The enter the header, select the header type column, and browse the header from the lookup in the value column. Okay. By using this lookup, you can fetch the previous header information. And XPath. Next is XPath. We have XPath, right? XPath allows you to retrieve the data from the incoming message using XML path language. The example. If you have selected this type, you can specify the following value to print the element customer name incoming message. For example, uh, if the value is like uh, generally, you can fetch it, you can get the value from directly here. But in this case, I don't have any XPath. This is a dummy one, so that's why I did not get any XPath from previous things. Okay, so like this, you can get the you can fetch the value from like this. So if the it but it fetches only first occurrence of this. Uh, element so so the the remaining occurrence it may, it will not take it the whatever the first occurrence of this uh, customer number it will be this does that value will be stored into this variable but not a rest, uh, next second and third and last and expression okay allows you to enter the cam camel simple expression for example you can use expression dollar exchange id to add the ex exchange id so the property parameters has control a control x dollar bra angular bracket and exchange id and close the angular bracket Thus, you can add a variables to this one and property next is property sorry coming to come here and we have property also here the property is allows you to specify the exchange property to enter the property of select um, select property type so this variable um, allows you to specify the specify exchange property to enter the property select property type as column so here also we can by using this header also we can set the property um, variables
again you know right whatever the variables we create in the properties in container that will the scope of that variable within the i flow only not outside the receiver and external parameter allows you to consume the consume an external parameter to and write its value to the header at a runtime and property data container this enables you use external parameter in the subsequent router step so generally uh, but i'm not sure about this one <coughs> but uh, this allows us um, consume externalized parameters to so whenever we want to external parameter that time you can use this one enables you to external parameter in subsequent router step for example in order to dynamically define receiver of the message depending on the value of the external parameter okay as we know as an sap pa we have external parameters we can use those parameters externally but I, i don't know i never used it you can see later and local variable <coughs> local variable allows you to define local variable to write a value at runtime to the header or property data container the value can be evaluated at subsequent steps of the integration flow so this way this value will be available for the subsequent uh, steps in the i flow next is global variable global variable allows you to define global variable and write uh, its value at runtime to the header or a property data container i think this the he mentioned this variable can be used across different integration i flows of the same tenant so what wherever uh, whatever the global variable we create here that variable can be used across all i flows of the same tenant this is important point we need to remember next <coughs> the same thing applies for the property okay and we have Uh, data type right yeah data type what exactly data type mandatory pro property if you have selected xpath as a type if it is a xpath type is xpath then this is a mandatory uh, optional property if you select the expression as a type <coughs> then it is optional if it is a, it is a mandatory when it you select as a xpath if it is a expression it is optional okay you should have to remember this one so what exactly this one valid java data type the data type uh, column is mainly used for the xpath type the data type can be belongs to any java class if the xpath contains namespace prefix specify the association between the namespace and prefix on the runtime configuration tab page of the integration i flow property view runtime so if you what what he said if the xpath contains namespace prefix specify the association between the okay you know right namespace mapping if we select the select this integration process and you can again you will see the one more properties for that i am integration process and uh, namespace mapping is there just add the turn namespace there if you have selected xpath as a type you need you you also need to assign a valid java type data type type for example if you are addressing a string type element then java dot lang dot string as a java data type for more information check the camel apache org because this entire thing is runs on the camel apache uh, runtime right that's why you need to refer the camel apache org simple for more information to enter xpath select xpath type uh, xpath in the type column browse the xpath from the lookup into the value in the column okay just uh, once it is xpath is xpath you are supposed to see uh, like this so you, have, you need to choose the xpath uh, for that one next default value only relevant if you have selected local variables and global variables as a type local global variables okay and then only we specify the default value go to the body enter the counter expected outgoing message 
so if you want to uh if you want to uh, for example let me put some values here suppose if you want to uh, some constant value you want to put a message put like this okay then if you want to modify the body content with the uh, variable values in the previous section you can put values so we want to space place header variable content here as well as some other as well as property also you can do it right yeah that is in dot bond body this is a property variable this is a header variables you can place wherever we need it so like this you can prepare a body as we required so we know we have seen how to change the how to delete and how to modify the header parameters property parameters and body parameters also as we required if you do not do anything just remove this one nothing else the default uh, message content will be payload will be passed here right so this is the information about uh, content modifier step uh, 